Okay, YouTube, let's uh, talk about this here 690 dirt bike again. So uh, yesterday, um, before work, I had, I had just about 30 minutes, and uh, I wanted to put a new tire on for today, so I installed a new um, Moto's um, Mountain Hybrid. So this tire I've seen uh, on some other YouTube channels. Uh, Heddletown has it on his 690, and... Um, it just seems like a, a pretty good tire. A lot of people run um, trials tires around here because it's so rocky, and um, you know it grips on the rock a lot better. But I ride a pretty good variety of terrain. Um, today I'm down in the in the dusty, silty, sandy stuff on the coast. Um, there was some thunderstorms and stuff in the mountains, so I didn't want to head into the mountains, and so I I uh, diverginized my Moto's Mountain Hybrid out here in the sandy stuff. So my first impression is that it really didn't hook up a whole lot better than um, um, that Ken to Big Block that I absolutely freaking hated. So on the really hard pan sandy stuff, this trials tire is not really hooking up. So that said, in fairness, I don't have rim locks in this bike. I didn't have time to go to the shop to get one. Um, it's a 2.5 rear wheel, and so you can't really get the ultralight uh, rim locks, which is kind of what I wanted, so I, I hadn't gotten any yet, but I need to just get a generic rim lock so that I can run uh, lower pressure in this bike. So I started with uh, 16 pounds today, which is, which is high, I get it, but um, I rode over 60 miles of asphalt to get here, so I have to run a little bit more air for the asphalt but then I, I need to let it out when I get here. So I let it out to about 14, which is not really that big of a deal, but I was hoping that it would help enough that I would hook up a little bit better. So I'm still not impressed. This, this bike, um, I'm hoping that when I open the air box up, it'll have a little bit more grunt on the bottom so I don't have to rev it quite so much because on the street, when you're riding it, you're in, you up in the revs a little bit more in it and it really makes a lot of traction and a lot of power and it's really freaking fun to ride and then when I get it out in the dirt when I get it up into the power and I'm used to riding a 252 stroke so I like lots of power I don't mind it coming on but the back end skates all over the place and it has um, you know it's just it's just a lot of bike for me to be on and I'm basically trying to motocross the thing I know that's not what it's designed for but I have a lot of asphalt to ride before I ride, and I like to ride it really aggressively. So it's it really is a very capable motorcycle. I'm I'm really still quite happy with it. Um, I just need another bike. Um, it's a it's a hoot to just ride around. I I love riding. It's very comfortable. People bitch about the seats on these things. I find the seat is an absolute couch. Um, it's not a KLR 650 seat. I mean, give me a. Give me a break, it's a high performance motorcycle. But these people that bitch about the seats and have to order these seat concept seats, I, I don't get it. This this saddle is, if you can get my hand, I mean, it's squishy. This is the softest damn seat I've ridden in my life since, uh, since my worn out 1993 CR125 that the foam was so sacked out and that you're pretty much sitting on the pan. So for an aggressive off-road motorcycle, the, the seat's fine. Um, wow, that was a little rant. <laughs> so anyway, I, I did have fun on this thing today. Um, the conditions I'm riding in, it's it's 100 degrees and 70% humidity, and there's no shade. So I'm hiding underneath the one tree um, right now. I'm, I'm actually done. All I can hold on to this thing for is about, I don't know, maybe six, eight-minute motos, and then it just worked. So... I'm gonna show you this mountain hybrid here, and then I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna tell you about some things that happened to me today that I'm, I'm really quite excited about. So I'm gonna scoot down here. I'm trying to hide behind the bike from the wind a little bit because it's quite windy out here. So here's my new mountain hybrid, ah! and um, you can see it rode uh, 60 miles of asphalt today, and then um, I ripped around the sand track. Um, about 15 miles worth and peeling out on the hard pan and stuff and so it's showing zero wear 
and I've got it at 14 PSI, and I have a feeling that if I crank this thing up, or down, to about six PSI or so, then uh, we're really, we're gonna be making some traction. I think it'll actually be pretty good. I'm still really excited to, to get my new Metzlers. Uh, they're Metzler 360s. They're on the way. I thought they were actually gonna be here by this weekend, and I was gonna mount them and save this one for later. But uh, that wasn't the case. Um, I actually got this tire from a friend and because um, my local dealer doesn't stock them yet, um, I, I'm kind of hoping they do. But um, you know, if they don't, whatever, that's their choice. So, but I'm hoping the Metzlers work, and I'll continue to buy those from my local dealer because I want to. I really do want to support my local dealer. I don't like to mail order. Um, I worked at a at a mom and pa shop, so I understand, you know, the 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 stuff that they have to go through, and I really want to support my local dealer. So please support your local dealer. Um, you know, and, and unless you just don't have one, so so anyway, or they really suck. My local dealer is really cool. Um, I'll actually plug them right here. It's Kaiser Motorcycles here in um, Kona, Hawaii, and the owner is a friend of mine, and I've raced triathlon with him. His name's Chris Kaiser. He was a professional dirt track racer, and and um, he's owned um, or his family, I should say, has owned um, dealerships in Washington State and here. Funny enough, I didn't know him when I lived in Washington, but um, he's, a, he's a generation ahead of me, so I never met him on the racetrack. But anyway, um, getting six minutes into this video, so I'll keep it, kind of try and keep it interesting. So one thing that happened to me today is, you know, I've said this a million times, I'm, I'm a motocross track kind of guy, and I've always rode motocross bikes. This is my first enduro, my first um, um, street legal dirt bike, and um, my last bike was a 250SX. And I never rode with Bark Buster style handguards before. So I've sat on a few bikes with them. I've maybe rode a few bikes, a few laps with them on there, but I've never personally had full wraparound handguards on my own motorcycle. And um, I never liked them when I was in motocross because if you, if you got all tangled up, you could, I actually know somebody that got their arm jammed down into the handguard and snapped their arm as they flew over the handlebars. So on this bike though, it's very heavy and when I go down on it, I don't want to snap my levers and things like that. And the, the handguards really do protect, number one, your grips, your throttle tube, and your levers. And then on a KTM, you also have the expensive um, clutch that has the master cylinder. So I used to sell those parts. I know how much they cost. Well, I don't need more, but I'm sure that they're still, you know, a good 125 bucks or something without looking them up. Um, so I don't really want to break those parts when I can just dump it over on a set of handguards. So I'm really not impressed with the Psycho handguards, by the way. I paid $180 for my Psycho handguards. Actually, I didn't. That's what retail is. But today I took um, um, a little, uh, I don't know, header. Yeah. And uh, I blew the the bolts out of the handlebars right here, so it ripped it out. So I just had a handguard dangling off, and the bolt flew into the giggle weeds and stuff. And it's just because my front tire got loose in a corner. And when I got out here today, the front tire was just loose all over in the corners. And and I'm running this uh, MT21 front tire still, and. This tire is, uh, it, while I think it's a pretty decent dual sport tire, I really do. Um, it's, it's getting kind of end of life. Uh, let's see if I can get in here and show it to you. It's getting a little bit end of life. The knobs are kind of starting to wear a little bit funny. And, you know, it's, a, it's not really meant for soft terrain. And this is, this is essentially what this is, is soft terrain. It's, it's just sandy, sandy stuff. So this big, you know, 350 pound motorcycle, it's kind of pushing through the corners and um, yeah and it just it just pushes around so I I dump it and I take a hitter in this into the right into the dirt and it breaks the handguard so I pulled the handguard off and then I was gonna um, shoot some some photos and stuff I upload the crap to Instagram you know I've got I got my little Instagram following and stuff from triathlon and those people like to watch that stuff. So I come out and I just set my iPhone in the dirt and I take some pictures and and then I upload them to Instagram. So 
Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, maybe I, if I can figure out how to put a link in here, I'll put it in here. Otherwise, you can click through to my profile and follow me on Instagram. Um, anyway, long story short, I, I don't want my pictures to look goofy on Instagram with me riding with one handguard, right? So I pull the other handguard off. Actually, first I ride a couple laps with one handguard off. And maybe I'll insert some video from here or into here of that um, where you can see me riding with one handguard. The thing I noticed in when I was started riding with one handguard is on my right turning corners, which is the side that broke off, I was, I was getting further up on the motorcycle and I started to corner better immediately. I'm like, holy crap, I'm up on the front of this bike more. And I used to ride really far up on the front of the bike. I mean, I used to bury my ass right basically into the gas cap when I rode motorcycles or motocross. And uh, people used to tell me, you're back end swapping all over the place. Well, I didn't care because I was on the front of the motorcycle. The rear end could go wherever it wanted. As long as the wheel was spinning and it was making traction, I didn't give a crap. Um, and maybe that's how like kind of my more wide open style, lack of throttle control, um, kept me going in straight lines and, and I, I mean I was a okay rider I was a decent rider I wasn't I wasn't pro by any means but but uh, especially in sand tracks I could I could I could rip I mean I I mean I fucking rip on sand tracks I'm I'm confident enough to say that um, I've I've passed some really really fast dudes on some on some sand tracks because I'm not afraid to hold it open as long as the bike will track um, and when it when it's holding open it's making power right so I was a good sand rider. So I, I went over and I parked and I pulled the other handguard off. And I was riding again and I'm starting to get a little bit tired by this point, but I'm getting way up on the front of the bike. And now I have more traction on the front wheel because I got the weight on the front wheel and my elbows are up better. And I'm just sitting on the front of the bike going in the corners and then I'm just, you know, dumping the, the clutch and this thing's just rah, and it, and it's, this tire is able to dig down to the bottom now, or at least dig into the dirt so it can make more traction. And I kid you not, I was going, my corner speed was twice as fast. And so those hand cards, and, and subconsciously now when I think it, they were keeping me from getting up on the front of the bike because it was like they were gonna hit me in the chest and like subconsciously my, my body, um, my brain was holding my body away from those. And so I, I'm riding a lot faster with the hand guards off. So this is cool for my confidence because I'm like, geez, I just can't ride this bike very well. I know it's a big bike and I'm not using it for its intended purpose. I'm riding freaking twisty corners on a, not a motocross track, but it's a little corner track. It's the, the lap times are like one minute. And, um, but it's real sandy and stuff and it pushes cause it's so big and I just, it's kind of screwing my confidence up, but it's what I have and it's what I need to practice on for my race here um, in January. And when I get on a lighter bike, it's gonna be rad, right? So anyway, now that I'm riding up onto the front of this thing, it's it's completely changed my riding. And, um, and I love it. So maybe I'll invest in some of those breakaway levers and actually keep the hand guards off of this thing. Or um, I'm already pulling the mirrors off because I, I subconsciously noticed the same thing with the mirrors. I felt like I ride better without the mirrors on. And it's because the mirrors were getting real close to my face. And maybe I can splice in a, a picture of kind of where the, my face is and stuff. When I'm exiting a corner, it's, re, it's real far over the front end. And I would have a mirror right next to my eyeballs. So I was taking the mirrors off and I felt like I was riding better. And then now that the handguards are off, I felt like I was riding better. But um, I need to take precaution because I'm out here riding by myself and I don't have any um, spare parts or anything like that. So um, if I break a lever 60 miles from home, I'm kind of fucked. So, so um, 
maybe get some breakaway levers or, or make it so I can pull the handguards on and off real quickly. Um, cause they are kind of nice if you get stuck in a rainstorm or something. But, um, the other nice thing is that, you know, these are ventilated handguards and, um, uh, it, it was nice to have the, the, uh, airflow on my hands and especially down here, like I said, it's 100 degrees, it's 70% humidity. Sometimes it's 90% humidity down here. And that doesn't change. It's, it's, this is Hawaii. It's always like that. So um, it's cool. I'm, I'm endless summer. But unfortunately, we don't have as, as many cool like uh, motocross style riding places that can take advantage of this, this nice weather. So um, that's kind of a little bit of a bummer. But I'm making do with what I got. And... Um, the 690 is working pretty good. I put some uh, plain white backgrounds on here. I'll, I'll give you a little walk around. It's a 15 minute video already anyway, so might as well, right? So uh, I took the stock graphics off and I pre-cut my, or I, I cut myself some backgrounds. So this is all white. So the whole front of the bike is white now. I got my Bigfoot sticker. You guys have probably seen that. I'm a Washingtonian. Bigfoot's from my neck of the woods. So I believe, hashtag I believe. Um, and you can see the back. One thing I, I noticed about the 690 here is, is when I'm getting really aggressive on it, these handles, I mean, they, they hit me in the ass hard. Um, when I'm over the back of the bike, I got long legs, so I sit back over the back of that bike pretty, pretty easily. And, um, so if, if I do end up taking this thing onto a, a real motocross track, um, I'm going to, I'm going to ditch those handles. Um, because they, they, they whack me right in the freaking spine, man. Um, but uh, for, for out here, you know, bugging around in the trails, um, it's okay when I, when I dump it over. It also protects the, the side from taking some impacts a little bit. You can see that uh, I hit a, basically a rock wall, bam, right in the side of the side panel. And, and there is a little tiny chip out of the fuel tank. So these kind of protect some hits you can see it's maybe it's a little bit chewed up right there from where it's taken some hits so uh anyway i am having fun on the 690 i do love the 690 um, um it, it does everything really well it's just doesn't motocross really well and and you just can't expect that from it and i really don't i don't want people to think that i do but it's what i have and it's the way i want to ride so uh, i'm kind of I'm kind of having fun riding it like that. And if I can muscle this big old beast around, I'm going to be fast again. So anyway, uh, we'll call this a vlog. And um, that's my vlog for today. And I uh, hope you guys are having fun riding. Um, Got to get my little uh, like and subscribe speech. Maybe I can figure out how to, how to put some, some buttons up there. The like buttons, the thumbs up right little thumbs up click the little thumbs up <laughs> and subscribe so that uh youtube will will uh, i can meet the content creator guidelines um which is ridiculous so maybe i'll i'll, I'll splice in some of my uh, berm shots today and i even have my blinker on in the berm so <laughs> for all you people for all you dumbass drivers out there that can't even turn your your fucking blinkers on on the street um excuse my french but you can't even turn your blinkers on the street and i'm turning them on on a dirt bike going through a corner just saying just kidding it was an accident but hey anyway, my blinkers on in the corner <laughs> anyway um hang loose from hawaii and um leave some comments down below let me know what you think uh, what should i do to the 690 um, my next little project I think is an airbox project. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and uh, open this up, maybe modify it myself. I can't afford a Rottweiler kit right now for it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna DIY something. So um, I feel like that I can do that without um, remapping it because um, the Rottweiler doesn't require remapping, and it's a pretty aggressive airbox mod. So I think I can do my own without remapping. And uh, when that pops up. Um, I will share what I did so if you have a 690 like and subscribe and uh, you'll be notified hit the little bell thing so that uh, you can be notified and then it'll it'll pop these videos up and this is the only bike I have so if you're a 690 guy uh, follow my channel because it's the only bike I have it's the only one I'm gonna be working on so it'll be relevant to to whatever 
if you have a 690, it'll be relevant to you. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I'm out of here. I'm headed back home. Take care. Yeah.